hello once again and welcome back to purposely designed um sorry i got the first one cut a little short but we're back again and we're talking about lift and shift this is angela and i just wanted to um recap as to what we were talking about lifting and shifting going in the way that the holy spirit would direct us and lead us and guide us to you know um God, you know, in due season, he will lift us and he will shift us in the way that we ought to go, even to grow, you know, uh, lift and shift. And so that's the word that the Lord gave me um, the other day. And I was, you know, talking about this and not only that, but um, I had spoke on um how sometimes you know he'll not only tell you um but but he'll also show you or show by display as to what he's saying and i was talking about how he showed me that he did that once um i said with the bible study but i met with um a revival i just attended which i'll be um elaborating more on later on but um first Peter 5 and 6 says humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time so the time is coming where God will lift you God will lift you in due time and so um Matthews Matthews chapter 23 verses 12 it says, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So you have to be in a posture of uh, humility. You know, one said a low estate. Uh, in other words, you have to be humble. You know, and when you are humble God will exalt you because the of the humility, because you recognize the fact that you can't do anything of yourself anyway. You know, I often share that. Like I, the only way that um, I'm able to do anything is if God allows me to, if his spirit, you know, does the work for me, through me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no power except for the power that he has given me, which is the Holy Spirit. And so that's not of myself, that's of him. And I know this. And um, when you know that, uh, what they say, um, um, what's already known don't need to be said, you know, so something to that extent. But, you know, you know what I mean? If you know this, I don't have to talk about it because I know it already in my heart. God knows that I know. You know, I don't give myself any credit. It's all him. And, you know, the only thing that I say that I am is who he says I am. You know, I can only do what he allows me to do through his spirit. And, you know, if you recognize it's his spirit doing the work, then what can be limited to you when you're walking and you're working and you're doing the, the will of the of the most high? You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that can... Um, he said, I will not withhold any good thing from you. So, I mean, how, you know, if you're walking in his will, the way that he would have for you to go, what will he withhold from you? Because your desires ought to be his, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your will is, Lord, whatever you see is best for me. If you say no, then I won't go. You know, if you say, okay, yes, go, then I'm going. Whatever you tell me to do, Lord, I'm, I submit my will, my way, my desires unto you. Whatever your will is for my life, that's what I want to do. Um, Philippians 4. And we're going to start. We're going to start with 6. And it says... Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So we have to come up higher even in our thinking. Even in our thinking process, we have to be thinking on these things. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now th- uh, that now at the last your care of me have flourished again. Wherein you were also careful, but she lacked opportunity. See, some of us lack the opportunity not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned to whatsoever state I am therewith to be content so we have to learn to be content regardless of the fact of what we're going through you know sometimes when we go through we don't go through well you know and it's so awesome because the closer you get to the Lord the more he show you where you went wrong And when you was going through, you know, we have to have that trust to the end. (laughs) Even when we're going through something, you know what I'm saying? The bill needs to be paid. We just have to trust God even to the end that he's going to do it. You know, he's going to uh, make a way out of no way. We, We can't start in faith and not end in faith, you know. And that was one thing I talked about prior it says uh 12 i know both how to be a base and i know how to abound everywhere and in all things i am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need i can do all things through christ which strengthened it uh, strengtheneth me so we have to recognize that we can there's nothing <laughs> What can't you do through Christ that's strengthening you? You know, what can't you do through Christ who strengtheneth you? It says in 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by who? Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So know that God, he won't he won't withhold any good thing from you. Not only that, but he's going to supply all your need according to his riches and glory. There's nothing that, you know, but we just have to stay humble. And we just have to learn how to rock with whatever's going on, whatever, you know, you're going through. In whatever situation you're in, you have to learn how to flow regardless. You have to recognize uh, this thing ain't. Sometimes we we try to fight battles that don't belong to us. It's not your battle, you know. It belongs to the Lord. This is His battle, you know. And we have to trust Him um, when He's, you know, in due season. We gonna reap anyway, if we faint not. You know, that's what the Bible tells us. If if we don't faint, in Galatians 6 and 9, it 
It literally says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, let's let's go into that. Let's just go into it a little bit. I'm going to go to Galatians. We're going to go to one. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Look, if you're not humble, if you're not doing this thing in the spirit of meekness and considering yourself, Guess what? This thing can come up on you too. <laughs> Bear ye, it says, one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. If you bear in your brother and your sister's burdens, guess what? You are fulfilling the law of Christ. That's what it said. And so fulfill the law of Christ. How? By bearing each other's burdens. He did it. And we doing it too. For if a man think himself to be something. When he is nothing. He deceiveth himself. Here we are again. Meekness. Humble yourself. Humility. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. If you prove your own work, you don't have to worry about praising somebody else because you got your own work. You know, the only person I'm... I'm rejoicing in is is Christ because it's his work. He's the one doing the work and I I just give God praise. Um for every man shall bear, bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. So you got to be careful as to what you're sowing into. If you're sowing into your flesh, guess what? The flesh is going back to the dust of the ground. Wherefore, guess what you're going to do? It says you're going to reap corruption. Okay, and if you sow in the spirit, well, now you reap in everlasting. Why? Life everlasting. Why? How? Because the the spirit ain't gonna die. <laughs> the spirit goes on. The flesh is what go back to the dust of the ground. That's why it reaps corruption. Um, and let us not be weary in well doing. Don't get weary in the things that you do for people and well doing in the things that uh, when you when you're looking out for folks when you're thinking about somebody else when you do something for someone don't grow weary because in due season we shall reap if we faint not that's all that's if you just hold on to not fainting, you're going to reap. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men. So while we got a chance, let's do good to everybody. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. If you are the household of faith, we ought to truly, especially, it says, Unto them who are of the household of faith. So, let 
what I love about this scripture is this part right here 15 it says for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature and as many as walk according to this rule, peace on, be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus, brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And so, unto the Galatians written from Rome. Now, we was talking about in the first part um, how Christ lives in us. And so, how do you know Christ lived in him? And Paul is because he told you when he said that he bared in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And then he turned around and told you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. He dwelleth in you. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, that's how, that's who's lifting us and shifting us into the places that we ought to be in. A lot of times, though, we tend to not shift. We live, but don't shift. You know, we'll go higher and we'll stay there. Like I talk, we talked about earlier, we get stagnant. But God don't want you to be stagnant. He wants you to lift and shift. He wants you to lift. He wants to lift you up and take you where he have you to go. Okay? You know, um, and there's no limits as to how he, how you going to get there. There's no limits as to um, when or where you even going. There's no limits to none of that. We just have to trust God. We have to trust him, allow him to lift and shift us into the direction into which we ought to go. Um, that's, you know, what the Holy Spirit's job is, right? On to uh, St. John 16, 13. Let's see. Let's start with five. It says, but now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whether goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye shall see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come. He 
will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it to, unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. See, and... um. After he said that, people were confused. <laughs> we're going to skip down to 23. And it says, And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye ask of, ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Here too have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall shew you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out, of, out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. Let's go to 32. It says, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. So in that times of loneliness, know that you're not alone. The Father is still there. He is with you. Um, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So know that Christ already overcame the world. All we have to do is believe in him and believe on him um, and lift and shift. In the way that he would have us to go. Through the spirit. You know we. Um, let's, let's go to St. John. Chapter 17. Now this is where. It says. The, and we're going to go to one. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son and thy son also may glorify thee as thou has given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Now he told you, he has the power over all flesh. Do we actually believe he got power over all flesh? It 
And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So you're going to know me, and you're going to also know the only true God, which is the Father. He said, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. So they belong to you, but you gave them to me, is what he's saying to God, our Father. And they have kept thy word. They did exactly what they what you told them to do. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Like everything that you have given me are of you, Father. For I have given unto them. The words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He never said, he didn't say that. He said, they they are yours, Father. And all mine are thine. And everything that belongs to me belongs to you. And thine are mine. And yours is mine. And I am glorified in them. So because he's in us, he's glorified in us. And now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I and I come to thee so they are here I'm coming to you holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou have given me now keep them because these are the ones you gave to me that they may be one as we are one so there's that one again He wants us to all be one. We are one body. We build the body. We are the body of Christ. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, sorry, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now the the son of perdition it's different but he said none of them none of the rest of them is lost and it says and now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them Because they are not of the world. Recognize who you are. You're not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. As he is, so are we. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Keep them from evil. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. But I'm just asking that while they're in the world, Lord, keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Lord, sanctify them through your word. Because your word is true. He said, Do thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So, you know, one, being one is so important. Man, being one in one spirit, one mind, the mind of Christ, is so important. Um, lift and shift, lift and shift, shift your mind um, in the way of not the world, but of Christ, of the Holy Spirit, because that's how he's going to be able to lead you and guide you. We got to come up in our mind. Um, the word says, by the renewing of your mind. Let's see. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. So God wants us to be one too. Just like he and the son is one. He wants us to be one in him. I in them and thou in me. I'm in them and you're in me. That they may be perfect in one. That's how we become perfect in one. Through the Father and the Son. <laughs> and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world O righteous father the world hath not known thee but I have known thee and these have known that thou hast sent me and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Let's see, we're going to go to Romans 12. We're going to start with 1. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So he don't want just a part of you. He wants you to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't go changing and calling yourself to be like the world. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind you need to think differently that ye may be may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God the only way that you're going to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is if your mind is renewed and that you don't conform 
to the ways and the will of the world. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one in Christ, and every one member one of another. And so I believe we've we've read this. Um, but we have to have that mind of Christ in order for us to, you know, become one through the Holy Spirit. And, and this I'm talking about with, um, First Corinthians 2 and 16, it says, For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You know, we need the mind of Christ. We need a renewed mind. We don't need to be conformed by the world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. Why? Because we are a new creature. And we have to recognize that I'm a new creature. I'm not the person, you know, people will label you as the person that they've known you to be, but not recognize you as the one that you are. You know what I'm saying? Is that's not that's not who I am. No. Yeah, I, I I was I was I went that way because I had conformed to this world. But now I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. I had to come back to my senses as to who I was. Yeah, I lost myself for a second, but now I'm back. Yeah, I'm back on the right pace now. I know who I, exactly who I am. You know, some of us, you know, we've gone through so much trauma. We've gone through so much um, in this world that you may have forgotten who you were. You know, that reminds me. Let's see. Let's go to Galatians. Chapter 3. <laughs> it says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently sent forth, crucified among you? So sometimes your mind will have you fool. You'll be. You be all messed up, especially when you start listening to other people or listening to other things or whatever. Listen to anything else other than Christ and what he says. It says, this only what I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Which one? He says, are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So you got to recognize it's not, you're not going to be made perfect by the flesh. The only thing, the only one that could change you is the Holy Spirit. He's a, he's there to lead us, to teach us, to guide us into all truths. Um. You know, we just read that in St. John chapter 13, but it says, in um, Galatians 3, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? 
He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you. Doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, In these all shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which the which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live what by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of, of the spirit through faith brethren I speak after the manner of men though it be but a man's covenant yet if it be confirmed no man disnoweth or addeth thereto now to Abraham and his seeds were the promises made he saith not and to seeds as of many but as of one there goes the one and to thy seed which is Christ and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that is that it should make the promise of none effect For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of transgression. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels. In the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one. But God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law. Which which uh, law given. Which could have given life verily. Righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture have concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified. How? By faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You have to have that faith in him in order to be a child of the Most High. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So if you've been baptized into him, you have put him on. There is neither Jew nor Greek. 
there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female for ye are all one in who? Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are. Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 4. We're going to start with 3. It says, Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Now you see, he sent his spirit, Christ's spirit, into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through who? Christ. How be it then? When ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no God. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggary elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in, ba- in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, Be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmities of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despise not nor reject it, but receive me as an angel of God. Even as Christ Jesus. Where is the. Then the blessedness. He spake of. For I bear you record. That if it had been possible. Ye would have plucked out your own eyes. And have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy. Because I tell you the truth. Hmm. <laughs> They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealous, affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, 
which genders to bondage, which is Agar. So if you look at it as two covenants and you look at Agar, which was Abraham's concubine, well, which was Sarah's concubine, she wasn't free. She wasn't a free woman. And so it says that's bondage. It's basically talking about the law. Okay. And then it says, For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, an answer to Jerusalem, which is which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem, which is above, we talk in heaven, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travaileth not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We're the children of promise. We're not as um, the bond woman child. We're free. We from we came from Sarah. But as then he was that he that was born. After the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So there's an issue going on between those that are in the flesh and those that are in the spirit. Those that are in the spirit, y'all ain't got no problem with the ones that's in the flesh. That's how you want to live. That's how you want to live. But me and those that are alike, we ain't, we ain't trying to go there with the flesh we over here trying to mind the things of the spirit and the people that are in the flesh got an issue with it because they a lot of times just don't understand nevertheless what say of the scripture cast out the bond woman and her son for the for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So recognize that the ones that's of the 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 bond woman won't be heir with the ones of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. So now five says. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So we need not to, you know, um, be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but, you know, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath set us free. That's how you come up higher. Is you go and um, stand in that liberty. Walk in the spirit. <laughs> the Bible tells us if we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's how we do it. We walk in the Holy Spirit. And as he leads us, we follow him. Allow him to lead you and guide you into all truth as the word tells us to. And as he shifts us, be willing to go where he would have us to go. You know, even in the word, even as you read the word of God, as you allow him to speak or allow him to lead you through his word and allow him to pull out what he wants to pull out. And not what you want, but what he wants to pull out, you know. Um, just let him be in control. That's the whole point. Let God be in control. Let him be 
the anchor of your soul. Let him be the the one that guides you and leads you into all truth. Allow him just to reign in your life. You know, even like never before. Just let him do what he does. <laughs> Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up in the, the, the worldly sh- stuff. But get caught up in God. Get caught up. Let him lift you. In due season, he's going to do it. It Because he's lifting the sun that's in you. And bringing you higher in him. You know what I'm saying? We're going higher in him. You know, higher in him. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we just, we we give you praise and we give you honor, Lord. And we give you glory. Lord God, continue to lift and shift us in the direction into which you would have us to go and to grow. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your revelation of your word. We thank you, Father, for being the anchor of our souls. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for humility. Lord God, that your word says that that if we um be at that lowest state, you know, if we um humble ourselves, that we you know, that you will live in due season. You're going to lift us up in due season. You're going to um, cause us to be in the places that you would have us to go. You're going to do the things that that you want to do through us, in us, through you. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, because as we we learn that as we're in Christ, we are also in you, Father. And so we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory for that, Lord God. Continue to lead us and guide us through your word. Continue to lead us and to guide us through your truth, which is your son, Jesus Christ. Continue, Lord God, to, to um, elevate us, elevate our minds. Lord God, take us in and give us that mind of Christ, Lord God. Help us to receive what you've already done. Receive that mind of Christ. Receive, Lord God, all the things that you, you've already done through Jesus Christ. All the things that, um, that you already said you did on the cross. You know, everything that you, what that we had spoken of when it came down to your spirit, when it comes down to gravitating, allowing us to, uh, to um, enter in through the body of Christ, even through baptism and through him, we have access to you. And you also live it with me, with me just as well as he lives in me. We all live together. Lord God, help us to recognize that you're in us as well as the Christ is in us. Lord God, we just give you praise for that. We thank you, Father, that we are the temple. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've already done through Jesus Christ. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that come with it. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for all that you've done through the cross for our sins. Lord, we just uh, commit, we surrender our, our body unto you. Do as do with us as you will in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Help us, give us that grace that we need, Lord God. Give us that faith that we need in you, not in ourselves, Lord God, but in you. Thank you, Father, that greater is you that's in us than he that is of the world. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we don't lean and depend on ourselves, God, but that we'll lean and that we'll depend on you in the way that you would have for us to go. Lord, help us to grow in you. Because your word says, one planet, another water. But Father, you are the one that gives the increase. So Lord God, help us to increase in you. Help us, give us that increase that we need, that oomph that we need to go to that next level in you. Help us to go higher in you. Lift us, oh Father, in you and shift us. In the way that you would have us to go and to grow. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor in Jesus name. Lord, let thy will be done, not my will, but your will be done in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And we thank you for peace. We thank you, Lord God, for surrenderance. We thank you, Father, for your loving kindness that have drawn us nigh unto you. We thank you, Father, that we are not of the bond woman, but thank you, Father, that we are free through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for any shekels that he has shunned out of the end, that they will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Break Break off everything that will keep us in bondage. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that we can go higher and elevate. Oh God, help us to go higher higher in higher realms and higher dimensions oh father god you already said that you wouldn't withhold any good thing from us lord help us to go higher reach higher hallelujah pull us higher in you oh god give us that discernment that we need to move the way that you would have us to go and help give that increase. Give us that increase in order for us to grow. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Total surrenderance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for elevation even now, God. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the work that you've already done. Where we receive what you've done on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Father, that you dwell within. Thank you, Father, that you dwell within. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that greater are you that's in us than he that's of the world. Help us to reach them places that you would have for us to go and help us to grow. In the mighty name of Jesus and God will forever give you all praise, all honor, and all glory for it all belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Until next time, God bless.